gentleman is recognized. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank the Homeland Security Committee Chairman Michael McCall and, Peter, and former Chairman Peter King, as well as Ranking Member Higgins and Congresswoman Jackie Speer for joining me in introducing this bipartisan legislation. I urge the support for H.R. 1542, the Weapons of Mass Destruction Intelligence and Information Act of 2013. The legislation provides important guidance for disseminating WMD, that's Weapons of Mass Destruction, intelligence information at the Department of Homeland Security. Weapons of Mass Destruction are considered for the purposes of this act to be chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear weapons. Mr. Speaker, in 2010, the Congress established the Commission on the Prevention of Weapons of Mass Destruction, Proliferation, and Terrorism. The Commission was chaired by former Senators Bob Graham and Jim Talent. A principal but as of yet unfilled partial recommendation from the Graham Talent Commission was to assure that critical collaboration take place collaboration among Homeland Security intelligence assets and other federal, state, and local partners protecting the homeland. It's time for Congress to do its part right now to ensure that the nation is meeting its WMD detection and prevention responsibilities in a meaningful way. Mr. Speaker, when I stood before the body, this body on this bill last year, I had recently returned from the Middle East, and one of the takeaways from the trip was the amount of chemical weapons stockpiled in Syria. I raised concern that during this extraordinary time of insecurity in the region, these weapons could wind up in the hands of Al-Qaeda or other terrorists. Since that time, we've tragically learned that Bashar al-Assad has indeed used chemical weapons on his own people. And we have the threat and fear of the concern of those who have expressed a desire in Iran to use weapons of mass destruction to assure that Israel does not exist. Chemical weapons have completely changed the way our military prepares for operations. Just last week, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Martin Dempsey, told the Senate Armed Services Committee that the military is preparing for the possibility of encountering encountering chemical weapons in Syria. The risk of these weapons getting into the hands of terrorists continues to grow and our military continues to become more vigilant. These risks, the current nature of the threat, makes this legislation all the more relevant. We must be doing more to assure that local and state law enforcement are privy to intelligence that could stop an attack. In fact, the potential for homegrown radicalization has increased, and therefore the need for law enforcement and federal authorities to work together has increased all the more. I think we're all aware of the tragic circumstances of the attack in Boston that occurred all too recently. And although the FBI closed this case on Tamerlan Sarniev, a Treasury Enforcement Communication System, or text alert, was placed on him. It should have immediately pinged Homeland Security and Customs Border Patrol. Therefore, when Tarmelin traveled to Russia in January of 2012 and subsequently returned to the U.S. only to set up a jihadist YouTube account, a red flag should have been raised and federal, state, and local officials should have been notified. One of the purposes of this bill is to enhance the communication and collaboration between our federal intelligence assets, particularly those of Homeland Security, and our federal, state, and local partners. Chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear materials can be quite difficult to detect and to prevent. However, the danger they pose is unimaginable. My legislation is with the recommendation from the Commission, and it will ensure sustained Department of Homeland Security commitment to facilitate the partnership across the intelligence community and the first responder community. I urge support for this bill and reserve my